one of the central themes on our website, Countdown to the Kingdom, the theme that many of the messages revolve around is a present and coming great storm. The eye of that storm is what we refer to as the illumination of conscience or a great warning that is coming to the earth. And that word, the warning, originated with the seers of Garabandal, Spain. They gave certain signs that would precede that warning, and we're going to talk about that next on Countdown to the Kingdom. Hello, I'm Mark Mallett from thenowword.com, and I'm joined by my colleagues from New York. On the right is De- Professor Daniel O'Connor, and from California is Christine Watkins. My colleagues and team members on Countdown to the Kingdom that we started uh, March 25th, 2020. Can you believe? I can't believe. But we didn't. We we were planning it before then, not knowing that the very things we were writing of were about to start, and here we are again. When the yeah. when it seems the next phase is imminent. That's right. Um, so we, I, hey, Christine. Christine's the only one who speaks Spanish. Did I get it right, yeah. Garabandal? Perfect. Como se dice? Yeah. No. <laughs> I, I did get it right. Yeah. Oh, I did. Perfect. But I'm not going to get it right for the rest of the show. I know. We'll try. I'm, we'll try. I'm Canadian, eh? So I'm going to throw accents completely out out the window. But what was that all about? Well, the we have so much to talk about in this show. And uh, so why don't we, we, we get right to it. Christine, you did a video on uh, Gerabanda with Christine Bacon. And in that video uh, called Gerabanda Prophecies Happening Now, you went into great detail uh, on that on the on the whole thing with Gerabanda. Um, but we're so we're not going to go in quite into that detail. But if you could just hit the main points of what the seers uh, said would precede the coming warning, this illumination of conscience. And for those who, who don't know what we're talking about, basically the illumination of conscience, many seers have talked about it, is like a judgment in miniature, as if you were standing before God's throne and you were experiencing a judgment. And what many seers around the world are saying is this coming warning we'll all experience over the course of minutes, um, this basically a light, an interior light that illumines our conscious and shows us where we are. And it's called a warning because it's a warning to all of mankind before God purifies the world. And I, there's Daniel. I thought there was a rapture here all of a sudden. Yes, I <laughs> got raptured for a second there, but I'm back, thank goodness. <laughs> I'm left behind. No, no, no we, 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 know we should mention that real quick. This is not the rapture. There is no rapture that's not part of, of Catholic prophecy. Uh, what we're talking about now is absolutely solid, trustworthy prophecy, and you're going to see in the upcoming minutes why it's so trustworthy, because Christine is about to go over several things spoken of by little girls decades ago. Things that could not have been possibly predicted by the Mm -hmm. most astute ecclesial and political commentators of their day. And yet what these little girls described in the 1960s is what you will see if you turn on the news today. And even before we see the explicit fulfillment of what was foretold there at Garibandel, the mere fact that these signs were foretold is astounding in its own right and frankly a vindication of the authenticity of these prophecies, which, uh, Christine, I'll let you uh, run through real quick now before we talk about each one a bit. Yeah. Absolutely. So the apparitions happened in Garabandal, Spain from 1961 to 1965, despite how Mark pronounced it three times just now. And there's a video in detail about this that Christine Bacon and I did called Garabandal Prophecies Happening Now. So if you're interested in going into that in much more detail, please watch that video as well. And the four little girls, their names were Marie Loli, Jacinta, Conchita, and Marie Cruz. And the church has not said that these apparitions were approved. The church has neither condemned them. They stand in a middle category. And I would like to also add, however, that Mother Teresa of Calcutta was a firm believer in them. So was Padre Pio. So was Pope Paul VI, so was St. Jose Maria Escriva de Balaguer, so was Pope St. John Paul II. And what they said would happen before the warning is that a synod would occur. Jacinta was only 12 
when she said she didn't know what the word synod even meant. And she was told by the Blessed Mother that it was a small council. So she was very specific about that. And she was also told by the Blessed Mother that it was important. So we have a synod. We also have the prediction that the Pope would go to Moscow. We have the saying from the Blessed Mother that the warning would come when no one could visibly participate in the Mass. So the Mass would be underground. It would be very hard to practice one's religion out in the open. It would be when communism returns. It would be when Russia had invaded much of the free world. It would be after four popes, the last one being the end of an era. And so these things we're going to go to in detail in this show and point out how some of this may be already occurring and some of this seems to be on the edge of happening. You know, and the I one- should, that's, sorry, <laughs> I, I, I should just really quick, you know, we were probably going to say the same thing, Mark, but I'll, I'll just throw out there real quick that that four popes remark that was said upon the death of John the 23rd. Mm. So <clears throat> actually what was said, this is another astounding prophecy, really, that there would be three more popes, but uh, Conchita uh, later clarified, I hope I'm saying that right, I hope it was Conchita, that one of the popes wouldn't count in that number of three because of his short reign. Who would have known then, except heaven, that there would be a pope with only a few weeks in office, as we of course know was the case with John Paul I. So he wasn't counted in that three. So if we count the actual popes that there have been, four popes since John the 23rd, and dur- so after which would be the conclusion of these times the end of the times not the end of time not the end of the world we've got way more to happen before then but that brings us you know looking at the popes that have followed with with um jp1 jp2 benedict before them paul the six we're now in francis which if this prophecy is authentic and i'm not claiming to take everything here as gospel we're of course discerning and uh, i strongly believe in garabandel but this you know we've got a number of different uh assertions here of various degrees of credibility but if this is one of the credible authentic assertions that means that this era that we've been long in must conclude during the present pontificate of francis and that's that's what christine was getting at there with the number of popes and how that too is astoundingly prophetic mark was that did you have something else or was that what was on your mind as well no i mean of course it all it's all on my mind but uh i i was i'm really struck by the word synod because um, th- that's not even a word that was really in my own lexicon probably until, you know, I don't know, 15 years ago. I mean, it was just not a word that we use very often in, 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 in Catholicity. And um, it's not like it hasn't been used by the church, but it would have been a word that Conchita did, wouldn't have known. It wouldn't have been a word that was common back then. Council, as Christine said, uh, would have been more of a common term. And Christine, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I believe they said to, to Conchita, you mean council, don't you? And she said, no, no, our Blessed Mother said synod. That's correct. That's amazing. And I, I and think... And synod, that wasn't on my radar, honestly. Yeah. I'll, I'll confess it was more reason. I, that, that notion of a synod wasn't on my radar until the pontificate of Pope Francis. So yeah. This is really a new phenomenon. It's not absolutely new, of course, that, that this has existed long, but it has not been part of Catholic discourse mm-hmm. until very recently. Common I, Catholic we discourse. talked about this in the last webcast, Daniel. I think, you know, why why a synod? Why would a synod be a, a big, you know, uh, one of the markers, one of the harbingers of, of what is coming? And now that we're into this synod on synodality, we see exactly we see exactly why we've got entire bishops conferences contradicting Catholic teaching, and the I can't remember his name. Forgive me, but the head I can give you that cardinal um, Hollerick yeah, was a, is a head cardinal of the, of, the, of the organization of the synod. Oh, he has publicly so the rejected page, yeah. the basic, te- basic teachings of the Church on sexuality on the grounds that they contradict modern science. Wow. And he said recently, he said, uh, we're going to get our way in this synod. We're, basically, I'm, I'm summarizing him a little bit here, but he basically said, we're going to get our way in this synod. I mean, mm-hmm. this is extraordinary. It's apostasy. It's a rebellion. It's a revolt. Exactly what St. Paul said would 
would come before the Antichrist, that there would be this apostasy. Uh, in some of the Latin versions, it calls it revolt, which is the word revolution. And we're seeing a revolution in the church, and we're seeing a revolution in the world, the fourth industrial revolution, which is a transhumanist movement. And it, the, the, here's what's interesting, you guys, about this is the fourth industrial revolution is really about turning us into gods. That's what Yuval Harari said, who is an advisor to the World Economic Forum. He said, we'll have godlike qualities. And so that's exactly what the Antichrist says, is that we, you know, he puts himself in the temple and declares himself to be God. And so all these little things that are starting to line up, this apostasy within the church, we have the, the, the World Economic Forum and, and the, the outer Fourth Industrial Revolution, and we're seeing it particularly with this synod. So anyway, that's, that's my only comment that I was saying about the synod, but maybe we should keep moving on to some of the other points unless you have something else well, to say. Real quick, um, can it's, I it's can we can we edit out when I talked over Daniel? I think it was really. Oh no, no, we don't need to, you didn't talk over me. It's oh, just yeah. it's it's to be expected. We got five seconds delays here being across. It's going to con- happen continent. the whole show. It's gonna, <laughs> so you guys will have to forgive us. We are not trying to be jerks to each other. Well, I'm a jerk already. Right. Everybody knows I'm a jerk, but we're not trying to be jerks to each other. We just have a major international delay right here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it'll probably happen a few more times, but don't worry about it. But yeah. this. And we got, yeah, we do have to move on, but I can't help but but emphasize how this standard is this over this attempt to overthrow God. And we are seeing the confirmations again and again and again in how this synod is becoming the context of the great apostasy. So it makes perfect sense that this warning, this illumination of conscience would come in the midst of it. And by the way, the synod has been extended to 2024. It's already started, but we're in it until the end of 2024. So that as far there's other signs that we're about to go over. But as far as the synod is concerned, any time between now and the conclusion of it is fair game for the warning. I'm not giving you a date as to when the warning will be. The point is to be on your guard. This overthrow of even the natural law. And with Benedict gone, I think he was kind of restraining many of these evil forces. With Benedict dead, God rest his soul, though I'm sure he's in heaven. In, uh, in heaven. They are becoming even more bold. These even cardinals in the church. Bold in their explicit intent to overthrow the divine and the natural law. That you can't get more apostate than that, than overthrowing what God has written into our very nature itself at the highest levels of the church in the Vatican. Make no mistake about it. This is the context of the great apostasy. Yeah. And uh, Cardinal Pell, he yeah. actually spoke out and wrote down before he died. And Daniel was, I think, astutely saying that it's, interesting how he died right after writing this that it may be that god allows that to happen or orchestrates things that the person still alive may not know that they're doing to have an exclamation point put to their writings by a death following that very writing but he says the booklet produced by the synod to be held in two sessions this year and next year is one of the most incoherent documents ever sent out from Rome, says Pell. Not only is it couched in neo-Marxist jargon, but it is hostile to the apostolic tradition and ignores such fundamental Christian tenets as belief in divine judgment, heaven, and hell. And he goes on basically accusing this booklet produced by the synod as kind of a new age uh, document that is not christian in essence yeah and holler that hollerick's right as unfortunate as it is he's right they're gonna get their way and i don't want to be a fatalist here pray and work against this but it does seem that they're going to get their way that means they're probably going to drive those who hold to the true magisterium. If you've been following Countdown's messages since we started, and even before, of course, we, we didn't we didn't create these years, we're just reporting on them. Uh, they've been, Our Lady and Our Lord have been warning for years and years and years, hold to the true magisterium. Why did they say the true? Because there's gonna be a shadow, a false magisterium. It's not gonna be actual magisterial text, not gonna be actual papal encyclicals or things like that. Stick with the catechism because what you're see, gonna see coming from the Vatican, from the men in red hats in the Vatican, it's going to contradict that. If there's contradictions, you know what to stick with. Don't ever doubt that. 
I I should comment on the because uh, I I brought this up on the screen and there was no context, but you know Cardinal Pell apparently in a leaked memo said that the, that Pope Francis this pontificate is is a, is a catastrophe, and it reminded me of of an of a message if I can if I can find it here, uh, yeah it's from Gisela. And, uh, you know, not everything, I think, is on Pope Francis. We talked about this in the last show, Daniel, about how Cardinal Mueller said that there are people who surround the Pope who are telling him what he wants to hear, but not what he needs to hear. In fact, he even suggested to one reporter that there are spies in the Vatican and people around the Pope who are just not good people. But in a message recently on February 3rd to Gisela, Our Lady says, Peter, that is the Pope, the successor to Peter, is unable to steer the boat because sin surrounds him everywhere. <laughs> it's very interesting because that's pretty much what uh, what Cardinal, uh, sorry, what um, Cardinal Mueller was saying to uh, to that reporter that the Pope is is not surrounded by good people. And of course, we can see with what's going on in the synod, um, th- there's real problems. But you know. The Pope is also appointing a lot of these people. So, bottom line is there's there's tremendous confusion right now, which is just all part of the what Sister Lucia Fatima called the diabolical disorientation of our times. And I, another way I have put it is that the closer we get to the eye of the storm, the more the winds of this storm get more intense. The debris flying in the air, it's confusing, it's disorientating. And so we have to be careful that we don't get caught up in this and just focus on all this dysfunction. And it is, it's a true dysfunction. And keep our eyes on Jesus, who is the leader and perfecter of our faith and the Lord of this great storm. Amen. And just to say one very disturbing thing is that most of the prophets out there are saying that the bulk of people in the church will follow this false church. Mm -hmm. They will accept things like the mass being destroyed. They'll accept Mm -hmm. it. And in essence, it's because these beliefs are already in the hearts and minds of the faithful. We have how many people now believing in the real presence? So you take the real presence away. It's not a shift in their internal belief. Right. And Actually, Father Gobi, in his message of December 31st, 1992, was told by the Blessed Mother that the sacrifice of the Mass renews that which was accomplished by Jesus on Calvary. By accepting the Protestant doctrine, that's what she says will be introduced, people will hold that the Mass is not a sacrifice, but only a sacred meal, that is to say, a remembrance of that which Jesus did at his Last Supper. And thus, the celebration of the Holy Mass will be suppressed. In this abolition of the daily sacrifice, and this is prophesied in the book of Daniel, chapter 12, consists the horrible sacrilege accomplished by the Antichrist, which will last about three and a half years, namely 1,290 days. And now, do we believe that the Antichrist is coming now, not just at the end of time? Well, guess who believed that? Pope Benedict Emeritus, and he said in a sentence that he wrote in a note to Vladimir Palko, who wrote the book, The Lions Are Coming. This is what he personally wrote down in 2015. We see how the power of the Antichrist is expanding, and we can only pray that the Lord will give us strong shepherds who will defend his church in this hour of need from the power of evil. That's pretty Man. extraordinary. Uh, uh, he and he wasn't the first pope to um, to suggest uh, in our last century that the Antichrist could be alive. Uh, it was in 1903 that Saint Pius said he may already be on Earth, and you know, you guys, I I always think, what would Pope Pius say today when he walks through our malls and he sees you know yeah. life size posters of lingerie and he sees pornography all over the internet he sees what we entertain ourselves with in their music in our movies and uh, just the general discord I, I'm sure he would say that the Antichrist you know has to be alive here on earth and now we're hearing Pope Benedict say this and uh, you know he's saying he didn't say we see how the power 
or, or the spirit of Antichrist is expanding, he said the power of Antichrist. He's referring to the Antichrist as if he is on earth. And every sign of the Antichrist, and we've talked about this so many times, the infrastructure is there for complete control that we will not be able to buy or sell without... Um, it says the mark of the beast, and it was interesting in the mail today. Uh, I got this uh, newspaper came in uh, just right before the show. Government's pursuit of the digital ID, and we all know that this is going to be tied to uh, that thing they put in your arm, and you won't be able to buy or sell unless you, uh, if your digital ID is not up to date. Uh, you're going to be restricted in your travel and what you can buy. I mean, we've never seen anything like this in the world. Yeah, and, you uh, could you, you yeah. would have had to write a work of fiction before. I, th- I was talking to Mark about this before we started. <laughs> I said, in any day, Pat, and write a work of fiction where you just visualize what society might just look like in the days mm-hmm. before the Antichrist makes his formal entrance. Forget everything you know. Write that work of fiction. You just wrote a script of what's in the news. Now, I said this to Mark you know, a while ago when we were just talking before we clicked record, and then he held up that, that article that he just got in, in the mail today, which is literally the news, and it's a description of what they need in order to institute yeah. the mark. This central bank digital currency, which years ago was not even talked about, is suddenly now about to be released. All they need is that, a fabricated global cyber attack that'll be the excuse for the security measure of needing the chip or the digital tattoo or whatever in the right hand or forehead. Voila, we are in the times of the mark. So if you think it's only possible, if you believe in the era of peace, and I sure hope you do, because it's an absolute guarantee. It's 100 percent certain. I assure you of that. If you believe in that. But if you think, no, the Antichrist can't possibly come until after that, right immediately before the end of the world. What are you waiting for? What do you think society needs to have happen before the times of the Antichrist himself have arrived? Really, we've got to get out of this idea that the Antichrist can only possibly come immediately before the end of the world because it's mistaken. And it's not only mistaken in accordance with seer after seer after seer of the last several decades, who you, what you know about if you've looked at Countdown of the Kingdom, mm-hmm. it's also not best in accordance with Scripture. I, I happen to have right here this book. I, yeah. This is I read this right when it came out. It was one of the things that really got me into eschatology. I think it was 2008, the end of the present world yes. and the mysteries of the future life. I mean, the English translation came out then. But this is a book uh, by Father Charles Armand John, St. Therese of Lisieux. You can see her. She said that reading this book was among the greatest graces of my life. You know, we 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 fail to consider that Saint Therese of Lisieux was certainly largely motivated by her apocalyptic uh, thinking, uh, uh, or her apocalyptic considerations, which probably came especially from this book, in which Father Charles Armand John writes about this notion that the Antichrist can only come immediately before the end of the world. This opinion is not does not seem to be the most certain. He says, the most authoritative view, the one that appears to be most in harmony with Holy Scripture, is that after the fall of the Antichrist, the Catholic Church will once again enter upon a period of prosperity and triumph. In other words, the era of peace, the reign of the divine will on earth is in heaven. He goes on and on, and if I had time, I'd read it all. Maybe in in another webcast, we'll do more about this, about describing just... The, the glory of this view, that of course it would be crazy to think that the end of the world would come immediately after the Antichrist, right after all this is accomplished in Christ, not with his physical coming, but with the breath of his mouth defeats the Antichrist, to suppose that the world would just suddenly end immediately after that, after all these things have been accomplished. No, he says, the era of peace comes after the defeat of the Antichrist, which is a great message of hope, because with each passing day, it's going to become more and more impossible to ignore the fact that we are on the cusp of the antichrist's entrance into the world and when you realize i beg you when you realize that that's happening do not lose hope because all that tells you is that your vindication is at hand as jesus said when you see these things happen raise your head for your vindication is at hand yeah. those are the days we're living in now and just and coming speaking after of people. seeing things happen I, I was thinking of how the devil is always taking things right he's taking them and he inverts them so he's taking the gospel and he's inverting it for his own means. People want to be saved. They want paradise, but they don't want to do what you have to do to get to paradise. They don't want to repent. They do, they want to be saved, but they don't want to take up their cross. They don't want to follow Christ. 
They want Christ without Christ. They want salvation without Christ. We want everything Christ gives through the anti-Christ. Mm -hmm. So I think if we just look at society, there's just yeah. a throwing down of what it takes, but an expectation yeah. that point. we're going to get the goodies mm -hmm. anyway, yeah. right? Immediate gratification. Christ without the cross, which is yes. not Christianity. It's pagan. That's paganism. It's new. That's the New Age gospel, the anti-gospel, right. which, will, which will just explode in the coming days. You're going to see so many sources of the anti-gospel coming. Yeah. Uh, you better have your head screwed on straight right now. Otherwise, you're not going to yeah. be ready for what's But I go to heaven when I die because I've decided that that's where <laughs> I want to go. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. I think it's that that's, simple in, in, in yeah. the mindset that an, the Antichrist gives us. And that, that's what makes the Antichrist deception so powerful, is it's going to have all of the elements that it will appear as if charity and peace and harmony, but without God. And so it will be, it will be false, but it will be so appealing that many Christians, even Jesus said, will he find faith when he returns? So, by the way, a footnote, before we move on to the next point now about Gerabandal, <laughs> Garabandal. Yeah, Garabandal. Um, it's just a footnote to what to what Daniel was saying, and because it, it's so important, just a plain reading of Revelation twenty, just a plain reading shows the Antichrist is before the heir of peace, and that's exactly how the early church fathers taught it, and it's just no longer tenable, as our translator Peter Bannister had said, who. Uh, you know, is, is is got his theological degree as well. That you know, he's just saying this is no longer tenable to think the Antichrist comes at the end of time. And as Father Charles Armagnon says, that that you know, summarizing tradition, that's not what the early church taught. So, Christine, bring us now to the next point. Uh, you, we talked about the synod, uh, but there's also, and maybe this ties into the Antichrist, is um, the return of communism. Now, you have to remember. <laughs> The kids said that when communism returns, is what Our Lady said to Conchita, when communism returns is when all these things are going to happen. But that was in 1960-something, and the thing was, communism hadn't left yet. So why would the seer be, Our Lady be saying when communism returns? Well, we know the story that communism basically, um, I don't think it disappeared. It didn't disappear with the fall of the Berlin Wall. But if we go to those comments, this is what, what uh, Conchita Gonzalez said, the seer of Garibando, one of them. When communism comes again, everything will happen. The author responded, what, what do you mean by comes again? Yes, when it knew they comes again, Conchita replied. Does that mean that communism will go away before that, she was asked? I don't know, said Conchita. The Blessed Virgin simply said, when communism comes again. And in, in my own writings on, on, count, or on the nowword.com, my readers know I have addressed this thoroughly over the years about how communism is now returning, and now we're seeing it with the Great Reset the World Economic Forum. Basically, it's returning now under the guise of health care, and it's wearing not a red hat now, but a green hat under environmentalism and climate change. We are going to see the greatest wealth transfer to the to the wealthy in the world. As the, as the motto of the Great Reset is, by 2030, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy, and they're dead serious about that. Yeah, it came again. I, uh, how, how can you know. even deny that? It came again. <laughs> I don't know if you mentioned this, uh, Daniel, but before we went on, you said that pay attention to what the World Economic Forum and other such elite entities announce is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And Daniel said, because they're planning for it to happen. So this well, what is they warn might happen. They, they only do that if they know they've mm -hmm. already planned it to happen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. So mm -hmm. please pay attention to what they warn might happen and yeah. what they're focusing on and don't and please don't be fooled <laughs> it's not because they're so smart that they just know the future and they're reading the signs they're creating the signs exactly they're unfortunately yeah. that powerful right now and i think we've explained why they're so powerful yeah. right now and whoever has been keeping up knows that communism through the World Economic Forum and other entities came two years ago. We can't go into, into the 
all the nitty gritty details of that on this platform. You can find more at Countdown of the Kingdom, but it's going to come in more iterations because, you know, the tyranny of the last few years, they're working on the next tyranny. We're going to see that this this further deepening of communism. It make no mistake about it. If you look at Agenda 2030, when you look at what they're trying to do, what they did the last few years with what we can't name here, of course, but with what is coming with this zero carbon initiative, it's way more universal and severe than even the communism we saw back when the girls were told by Our Lady that these events would arrive when communism comes again. So this is yet another thing, yet another sign of the warning, which if you don't see it happening now, I don't know what exactly you're waiting for, for it to return, because it is returning with a vengeance right now. So it looks like there's going to be a cyber attack. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. What might that They're cause in order for us to all need a central system whereby we can be tracked and buy and sell? What, what, all for our good. Cause something. So th the cause of the disaster and the immediate answer, which is a grab of power. So just look for that dynamic in whatever it may be. That's the underlying story. It's about the world solutions. Remember what the Catechism warns about the Antichrist, that it, his, he will give a solution to man's problems. There's going to be this great issue. Who knows what the specific context will be, but the mark of the beast, the Antichrist solution will come as a answer to this crisis humanity finds itself in. Be on guard against these supposed single easy answers to humanity's problems because that's the mo that's the context in which the mark itself will be introduced. So Mark mentioned about one of the seers talking about Russia unexpectedly overrunning much of the free world. And when you see mass cannot be celebrated freely, then that is preparation for the warning. Just to corroborate with Fatima, we have servant of God, Sister Lucia saying, many times the Most Holy Virgin told my cousins, Francisco and Jacinta, as well as myself, that many nations will disappear from the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen that yet. Right. She said that Russia will be the instrument of chastisement chosen by heaven to punish the whole world if we do not beforehand obtain the conversion of that poor nation. Unfortunately, not all of Russia uh, has converted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're we're seeing we're seeing this coming to. Um, I mean, it, it, NATO is really um, pushing Russia as far as it can. Uh, I was just listening recently how close Russia and Zelensky and Putin were to a peace accord, and NATO said no. They kiboshed it. So, you know, again, this goes back to you can't. A great reset means you reset. Uh, you can't build back better unless you tear it down. And right. this, this is the motto of Freemasonry, is uh, ordo ab chaos, uh, chaos, or however you would pronounce it in Latin, order out of chaos. You have to understand this is, this is intentional. And I, I think if we go again to our image of the seals that you see, this is our image on our website, countdowntothekingdom.com. <laughs> You see these seals, The if you look on the left there, you'll see the door of mercy, the labor pains that happen. I believe these are man-made. These are man-made labor pains. Again, the second seal is war. The third seal is hyperinflation. Go to your Bible, Revelation chapter 6, and read these. The fourth seal is another plague. Bill Gates, greatest funder of the WHO and the World Economic Forum, is talking about this next plague that's coming that will get our attention. The, 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 the fifth seal is persecution, and we're seeing persecution now really beginning to break out. It's really violent, of course, in the Middle East, where 39 priests have been killed in Nigeria just in the last year. And then, of course, the sixth seal is the, the illumination of conscience, the warning of, is, is what we're talking about. So, these things are ramping up as well is, is one of the key signs of the times that are happening. And uh, we're getting very close, I think, to the, to the uh, literal and final, I guess, definitive fulfillment of that second seal of war. Yeah. The great, you know, as you said, the great reset. Well, if you reset, if you're going to reset your computer, that you, you, the, something is presupposed there. Your computer froze. I don't know anyone who just resets their computer for fun. It's not fun to do. There needs to be a cause for it first, order, you know, order from chaos, the Freemasonry motto there. Mm -hmm. So this annihilation of nations, 
that Christine uh, alluded to there with Fatima, that's prophesied to come. And remember that Garabandel, the Garabandel message says that the warning will come when things are at their worst. Now, some people have looked at that and interpreted it as the opposite of what it says. If things are at their worst, that means they're the most bad that they've been. We've already seen two world wars. So what's coming is going to be worse than even those. So we're looking at an explosion of conflict across the world, which I could only call World War Three, which frankly has already started. So we should pray to to mitigate it. But when things are at their worst, this warning comes. They are on the verge of getting worse than they've ever been. We haven't had a world war since the the widespread use of nuclear weapons. But what do we see in uh, going on right now? I mean, good. This would this would take a a whole nother webcast. But there's proof after proof after proof that we're in it now. Pope Francis just days ago, he said bluntly, the world is at war. In other words, we are in World War III right now. That's the Pope saying that clearly and publicly. We There was just yesterday, maybe it was today as we're filming this, uh, a revelation. I think we all kind of knew this already, but it was just proven publicly that the U.S. was behind the blowing up of the Nord Stream pipeline. Russia is not going to take that lightly. Biden Last year, he said, if we send tanks to Ukraine, that's World War III. Guess what he just did a couple of yeah. weeks ago? He said, okay, Ukraine's getting tanks. And, and I'm not at all praising Putin here. Goodness, goodness, no. The point is to simply look at what's objectively happening and acknowledge that we are in it. Things are about to get worse than they've ever been. And as mm -hmm. Garabandel, as the girls were told at Garabandel, when things are at their worst, that is when the warning will come. Yeah. We are very close to them being at their worst. The world is not in as much explicit chaos now as it was in World War II, but all of the rumblings of it being much worse than that are already in the news, not as speculation, but as fact. And Daniel, in, the, in that same interview in which the Pope said that the entire world is at war and in self-destruction, he also says, again, this is just recently, that he still wants to go to Moscow, which is one of the signs that the seers of Gerobandal said would happen prior to the warning. Yeah, and that, that's such an extraordinary prophecy there, because think about the mere fact that that was foretold decades ago. Uh, our lady's message to these little girls, that for them to say that a pope would go to Moscow, that's just completely insane. That would have seemed completely insane in his day. Popes don't go to Moscow. That just doesn't happen. Not once, as far as I know, since the great schism of the 11th century. Uh, but now it's not only possible, but it's planned. And this is particularly extraordinary because Pope Francis has repeatedly said that he wants to go, he, he plans and he wants to go to Moscow. This was planned even before the Russia-Ukraine war. I've been keeping an eye on this for many years and been blogging about it. But when the war started, just about a, almost exactly a year ago now, people said, okay, I guess that's off the table. I guess there's not going to be a Pope Francis trip to Moscow. I guess we can write off that Garabandal prophecy because there's no way that could happen in light of this war. And yet, what do we see? Pope Francis just days ago saying, I still plan and want to go to Moscow. Guys, it seems that this is going to happen. And for those of you watching who think, well, I just don't believe in Garabandal, which is your right, that is one of the key places where Mary said the words El Aviso in Spanish. And we can have Mark butcher that pronunciation later for you all if you would like. <laughs> um, but so in researching uh, prophets of the warning, testimonies and prophecies of the illumination of conscience, I have a second version coming out because with the help of Peter Bannister, who's behind the scenes at Countdown, helping with all the messages, we found six more prophets, including the ones already in the book. So evidence is pointing towards the warning, not away from it. It's not as though any of these prophets, people are coming down saying, look, we've, we've looked at all of them. This is, this is clearly false. Garbandal is the only one. No. Uh, the Lord is having these people be discovered, their words be discovered to bolster belief and understanding so that this warning is not a fringe Catholic thing, 
but something that hopefully Catholics will understand is going to happen and very likely in our lifetime. So just to let you know who else is involved in, and they're in the book now, Friar Augustine del Divino Corazon in Colombia. He's a friar and founder of the Legion of San Jose and the co-founder of, ready for this in Spanish, Los Cierros Reparadores de los Sagrados Corazones. Mm. <laughs> um, Sister I'm jealous. Anna Ali of the Most Holy Eucharist from Kenya. Her bishop is gathering, and the Diocese of Eldoret is gathering information to start her beatification process. She's a hermit who had the stigmata. She was told of the warning. Um, you've got Marco Ferrari in Italy, a husband, father, and visionary who started an international charity. Loasi de Paratico, Loasi de Paratico. Okay, I'm going to butcher that too. <laughs> Luz Aparo Cuevas from Spain, wife, mother, stigmatist, visionary of the apparitions at El Escorial, Spain. Several orders, an order of nuns, several charities came, as well as a chapel that the communist government of Madrid just destroyed. What a sign of the times. But Mary asked for a chapel there. It was built. It was there. Many pilgrimages happened there. Sulima Gomez, Gomez from Quebec, Quebec, Canada, wife, mother, locutionist, and visionary as well. So, um, and Pedro Regis didn't make it in the book because the book was getting too big. But he's from Brazil. So, all of this is God, I believe, saying, please don't think this is fringe. <laughs> I have called these very special visionaries, many of whom have the stigmata, some of whom are already approved as visionaries in the church. What more, what more do you need? Do you still have to say that this is not part of God? It's also in scripture, Matthew 24. It's the sixth seal in the book of Revelation. It's there. Yeah. And just and, think logically. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I'm a philosopher. My, I'm a philosopher professor. My job is to try as much as possible to find common ground with the world, to reason with them in accordance to seeking after the truth. And yes, we can still do that. But my goodness, it's getting more and more difficult with each passing day. Uh, your average person in the street is getting so far away from the truth that there is absolutely nothing but a cosmic miracle from on high inundating the entire earth to bring them to their senses. God's going to give everyone that chance before the great events of the apocalypse begin. In accordance with his goodness and mercy, in fact, he must. You think he's going to let the whole world wander into the days of the Antichrist without giving everyone at least a chance? And sure, most people, as we know, they'll, they'll, they'll reject it, but he's going to give everyone that chance. And what does this tell us? The same thing we're constantly repeating time and time again, to get your face set like flint in accordance with the orthodox catholic faith to know the faith to evangelize like never before to proclaim the divine mercy like never before to soften hearts because that's what determines how people will respond to the warning whether their hearts are softened enough to accept the divine mercy this will be the greatest outpouring of divine mercy in history this in other words in a, in, in a word in, in a nutshell our mission in accordance with knowing this is coming is to be better evangelists than we've ever been before, to be more zealous evangelists than we've ever been before. So this is what we have to do. This is the best advice that you could possibly be given anyway. So to th this prophecy of the imminence of the warning, I hope you believe it. It's true. It's authentic. It's, it's, it's given in seer after seer after seer. But also, even if it weren't true, it is. But even if it weren't true, in a, acting in accordance with the assumption that it is true it would be the best advice you could take for the days we're in right now. I think, you know, people might be wondering, well, why, why our generation? Why are, why are we being given a warning? Why didn't other generations get a big warning? And I, I think if you, if you look again at, at our graphic that you see here on Countdown to the Kingdom, which is based on the early church father's vision of the end times, you see that what is coming is an era of peace. Jesus himself said in Matthew 24, he said that all these things would happen, he said, uh, and and it, and the gospel will be um, will reach the ends of the earth as a witness to the nations, and then the end will come. Well, to me, the gospel reaching the ends of the earth isn't us just going out and saying, "Hey, everybody, you need to follow Jesus." That's part of it, but the real witness of the gospel is when the word of God is vindicated, when 
when we see the Beatitudes lived in the church. And St. Paul says that Christ is preparing for himself a bride who is spotless and unblemished. Well, if you look at the state of the church and what we are right now, we're anything but unblemished. So Christ is preparing for himself a bride. And as you can see in this, this graphic here again, after the warning, then will come the time of the Antichrist, a very brief reign. And then there will be a purging of the earth, which is the three days of darkness. Because if you listen to what the mystics have said, like uh, Blessed Anne Mary Taggy, uh, about this this three days of Taggy? darkness. Taggy? Taggy? <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to rag on Mark for his pronunciation? I'm so sorry. I, everyone knows. I hope you know. No, I, I think it's Taiji. I think. I, I know. I got to. I got to warm up for these shows by saying. Taco, <laughs> At least we know or, she's Italian and not Japanese. Yeah, yeah now, or but. something. <laughs> But I, I do a, I do a really good, uh, you know, Scottish accent, maybe. But um, never mind that. But anyway, I've lost my train of thought. But I, I think the point is this: we're seeing basically the, the the parable of the prodigal son happening in our generation. And really, if you look at the seals of Revelation, it's it's very much parallel because this boy says, "I don't want to live by your rules." And he leaves his father's house. And what does he do? He blows it on prostitutes, on, on fast women, fast camels. I mean, he, he blows the wad. He goes broke, but he won't go home. He's, he's stubborn. He's rebellious. And it says that a famine then comes and hits the land. And now we've got a man-made famine happening right around the world. It is absolutely manufactured by these guys in their lockdowns and, and the, you know, culling all the birds. And I mean, it's just ridiculous what's going on. We can see it happening. And then when this prodigal son is up to his knees in the pig slop of his sin... So it's going to take us to get to that point. We're not there yet, but we will get there. Well, I think when war is broken out, when the economy's collapsed, and when we see persecution breaking out and another plague and so on, we will be up to our knees in the pig slop of our sin. And at that moment, the prodigal son had an illumination of conscience. And he said to himself, why did I leave my father's house? And he got back on his feet and he went back home and we read about the great what Daniel just called the greatest moment of divine mercy when the father runs to him from a long way off embraces him and says my son has come home he was blunt lost but now he's found he's blind but now he sees and this is what's coming for this generation and those who refuse the grace of the warning will be counted along with all those who follow the Antichrist, and they will be purified from the earth according to the early church fathers. They will be wiped from the earth, and the meek will inherit the earth. The gospel will reach the ends of the earth. The divine will will reign on earth. The fulfillment of the Our Father will happen. And then, Jesus said, the end will come. I, I wasn't going to say anything about this and... My heart is beating rapidly because it's a it's personally vulnerable. But I just went through something that might help people understand the calamities, why there might be war, why chastisements. How could a loving God do or allow such things? That therefore means there God isn't loving or perhaps there is no God because it's so awful. My sister and brother and I were trying to convince our parents who have dementia and my father is a diabetic that if they didn't receive a caregiver, if they didn't open themselves up to help, my dad could die because they're not able to regulate his blood sugar. They shoved the caregiver and the help out the door and there was nothing we could do to get that person in. We had to brace ourselves. We love our parents. And it pained us so much. This has just happened last week. I mean, it happened uh, two months ago. We had to step back, waiting for the inevitable disaster to happen, praying and hoping that when it did, they would wake up and say and see the truth and say, yes, we need help. Sure enough, Three days ago, 
my dad ends up in the ICU in the emergency. He almost died just three days ago. I was holding him. He was shaking. I was praying over him. Uh, they don't believe in God. So I asked the viewers to pray for my parents and I didn't know if he was going to make it. I was sitting in the car with my mom driving there because yes, they, they had caused this and she was sitting there in silence. I was sitting there in silence. I'm like, Lord, what do I say? And I said, dad almost died yesterday. And then she used the Lord's name in vain, but that showed how shocked she was. And we sat in silence. I wanted that to set. I wanted it to settle. We got to the hospital. She reality was there, dad in the ICU. And then I said, Hey, are you open to a caregiver? Do you see that maybe you can't do it on your own? Maybe you're not God. Maybe you need God is how God is saying it. Maybe you need someone to save you from this blood sugar problem. And she looked at me and she said, yes, we'll take a caregiver now. Yeah, that's the state of the world right now, isn't wow. it? Beautiful. Yeah. And I'm sorry if it's, I mean, it's, I don't mean this at all disrespectfully, but we're all, we're all a bit senile right now in the world. The world is going, the world's going crazy and mm -hmm. God is going to let us reap the full uh, effects of that. But in the morning, we're going to have that moment of realization of what we need. And we need to get the world ready for that. We need to be, we need to be the one to proclaim this gospel, this divine mercy. And I believe, I believe that, that we're going to get ourselves a notification. This is my speculation. This is not a prophecy. But I believe that, especially through Magigori, we're going to get a heads up maybe. It's we're supposed to be announced when the time of the secret starts several days before. So I think that through Medjugorje, we're going to get a heads up when this is about to hit. So I'm begging you to get your soul ready now. Get to confession. If you are holding back any serious sins, you better get them confessed right away. Because mm -hmm. God needs you to be this great evangelist immediately after the warning hits. To help bring people to their senses after they had a moment like, like Christine's own parents did in that. That's gonna, that's symbolic for what the whole world is about to experience. But this, I think, again, with we started off with looking at how the messages Our Lady is giving, correlating them to what's going on in the world today, seem to indicate that we are now in it. And none of us have dates to give you, but my goodness, it is feeling incredibly imminent. The last Medjugorje message basically said. This is it. And I actually don't have it in front of me at the moment. But Our Lady told, I think it was Mirjana, that the world is at a crossroads. Humanity is heading to perdition. That, that Satan is, is seeking the destruction of the world through war. This is the time. These are incredibly strong messages for any apparition, but certainly for Medjugorje. And I've, I've, you know, I've long had in my mind, when the Medjugorje messages get particularly starkly apocalyptic. I know that there's been strong uh, warnings there from time to time. But when we start seeing the warnings in the Medjugorje messages that we saw last from there, we better really keep an eye out. We better really keep oil in our lamps, as our Lord admonishes in the gospel. And we are seeing it not only at Medjugorje, but everywhere. Look, I mean, I hope that everyone is on their knees begging God's mercy upon the people of Turkey right now, for example, that it just breaks my heart, you know, each natural disaster that happens as time goes on breaks, honestly, just brings me to tears more and more and breaks my heart mm -hmm. more and more because of how many more smartphones are out there and how much more you see yeah. with what's going on in the world, the children suffering, the children under the rubble right now. I hope that I hope that inspires everyone to pray and fast as never before. But yeah. this, unfortunately, might only be the beginning of these chastisements that have been foretold if indeed what is starting now is what the last Gisela Cardia message said. And I don't know if you have that ready, Mark, but Gisela Cardia just a month ago, just in January right. of this year, said that natural disasters are, um, I'll paraphrase it now unless I see it pop up. Oh, there it is. So she said, Our Lady allegedly told Gisela Cardia that there will be many natural disasters, earthquakes and floods which will follow one another as never before. So if indeed 
this enormous earthquake in Turkey and Syria was the beginning of this time foretold by Our Lady. We better be ready to depart from this planet whenever <laughs> we better brace for impact, as your screen says right now. We better be prepared. Our souls better be prepared, and we better uh, realize that this rebellion of the elements, this explosion of natural disasters, this too has been prophesied. So if you, if you check the news tomorrow and you see yet another volcano and they say okay well volcanoes happened before and, and then you suddenly see another earthquake and then another devastating wildfire or hurricane if you start seeing these things suddenly happening with a regularity that cannot be explained through uh what we would expect to see scientifically naturally you better realize that that's another sign that these times we're in now are coming to a swift conclusion mm -hmm. and this is just part of it they're, um, they're labor pains, and the closer you get to the new birth, which is the era of peace that's coming after all of this storm is over, um, uh, the labor pains get more intense, and we just had our seventh grandchild born, and so we, we, uh, we, all, we know all about those labor pains and how intense they get, but when that life comes, as Jesus says, the woman soon forgets the pain she was through, and we have to remember that when this time is over, there will be peace. We're down to just a few more minutes here, but I think for some closing remarks, I'm just going to say that we need to have, for, for my part, we need to have a, a heavenly vision. Keep your eyes on heaven. And I, I don't even say keep your eyes on the air of peace. I don't know if I'll be there. None of us knows. We might be called to martyrdom. We might be taken in an earthquake ourselves. We don't know. Mm -hmm. And we just need to have our eyes fixed on heaven. Because look, folks, even... Even if everything in the world it was fine today, even if there was peace and everything, we're still going to die someday, and heaven is our goal. So uh, this is how to keep your hope and to keep yourself from going crazy, as Daniel was saying. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on living in the present moment and your eyes on heaven, and just set your goal there. And, and just all of this stuff has to happen. It has to happen. But God will be with us. Jesus will be with us. And he's given us Our Lady as the ark for this these times to sail through this great storm. Christine, yes. I don't know if you have any closing words. Well, I found the latest Medjugorje message, January 25th, 2023. So perhaps no one can tell us better what to do to have peace than Our Lady, which she does in this message. Dear children, pray with me for peace because Satan wants war and hatred in hearts and peoples. Therefore, pray and sacrifice your days by fasting and penance that God may give you peace. The future is at a crossroads because modern man does not want God. That is why mankind is heading to perdition. You little children are my hope. Pray with me that what I began in Fatima and here may be realized. Be prayer and witness peace in your surroundings and be people of peace. Thank you for having responded to my call. Hmm. So it's very clear that the signs spoken of by the seers of Garabandal are happening right before our eyes. Um, when the warning comes, we don't know. There's a lot of people trying to predict the dates, trying to set it. Uh, we don't know. God's timing is not our own. But what is important is that we're prepared. And the way you prepare is get to confession. Get to confession. Go there and repent. Do your examination of conscience every night before you go to bed. Ask Jesus to forgive you for the sins of that day. And then lay your head down on your pillow. Sleep well. And get up in the morning and try and be a little bit better the next day. So, and pray, pray every day. This is what Our Lady says. She says, pray, go to the sacraments, right? Fast. These are the things that we need to do. We need to start now. I mean, it's, it's, it's almost too late, but it's not. But we need to pray and be on the vine because Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Daniel, I guess we'll give you maybe the final word. I like that. I like what you just said there, Mark. It's almost too late. But it's not. Yeah, it's almost too late. But it's not. Remember that. That's what I, I want to leave that in our listeners' minds. Amen. Well, on behalf of Christine and, and uh, Daniel and myself, 
Oh, we pray for you every day. Oh, we hear a baby in the background. That's a cue. That a little someone... sign of hope there, yes. <laughs> That's right. There's the future. You just yes. heard it. So until next time, God bless you all, and know that we're praying for you every day. God bless. Good night.